Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today is so exciting because we are announcing a brand new product that I'm releasing with Ranger. This has been in the works for several years and it's really going to bring tons of versatility and many new options for the ways you use texture paste on your card making and craft projects. But before we jump into the new product, I wanna give you all a huge thank you for the way you've received Lunar Paste. We released Lunar Paste a couple years ago and you guys have really brought it into your homes and created some absolutely amazing projects with them. And having each in individual paste colored with a different pearl powder was so exciting for me because it gives you a more rich and intense color that you can use on both white and black cardstock and it's going to shine so vibrantly. The chemist goes in there and puts in several different powders to like create these new different colors that match my ink pads, which is something that was super important to me. So it's really a grab and go product. You can just take the paste, put it on your project and put any excess back into the jar rather than having to mix and concoct your own. And the reason why we're recapping Lunar Paste is because today's product is a little bit similar, it's almost like Lunar Paste's twin sister. And these are Solar Pastes. So Solar Paste comes in six different colors, but each one of these is white. I know it's a little bit confusing, but it'll make sense as we go along. Each one of these white pastes is tinted with a different mica powder, but these powders are special because you can only see them when you tilt them. So if you look at this sheet here, you can barely see these colors, but when you tilt them in the light, they become the different rainbow colors. And it's even a little bit difficult just to see in the studio. So I'll show it in some sunlight clips too, but really in person, these are so magical. So on white cardstock, they almost look like one color when it's tilted one way, and they completely shift and shine when you tilt it the other way. So it's nice and subtle, which I really like for some crafting projects. But then when you apply it to black cardstock, you really have that wow factor with these. They still have a little bit of a white tint when you're looking directly at them. But then again, when you tilt them in the light, it really brings the magic to these pastes and tons of amazing and intense shine. So on black cardstock, they're similar to a lunar paste, so you can sort of use them along with lunar paste to expand your color collection. And it's also super important to show what it looks like applied thick. So here's what it looks like applied thick to the black cardstock, and here you can really see the white paste sort of coming through, but then again, when you tilt it in the light, you get all of the amazing, beautiful, and intense color and shine. So I love how that sort of shifting property happens when it comes to using the solar paste on your card making projects. And by the way, solar pastes are out now, so I'll have links down below to several different retailers where you can go shopping, and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Now let's quickly run through the six colors and names of each one of these pastes. Now these are separate from the regular Simon Hurley Create colors, so they have different names because they don't necessarily coordinate with any ink color in the line. This first one is called Cross My Heart, and this pinkish reddish shine is absolutely gorgeous when you shine in the light. And look at just how different it looks on the white and the black cardstock. Next we have Overheated, which is the orange in this line. I absolutely love this rich and intense orange. And again, it looks completely different on white and black cardstock. The duality of these pastes are insane. Next we have Golden Hour, which is the yellow. And I love this bright yellow gold color. It's really beautiful. And again, you can only see the yellow at certain angles, which is really special. Next we have Crocodile Tears. This is one of my favorites. It's kind of a minty green color, and it looks absolutely beautiful on both cardstocks. The blue is called Beluga. How fun is this one? It's a brilliant bold blue and again super intense on the black cardstock and a little bit more subtle on the white. And lastly we have purple which is called Royal Flush and this one is just gorgeous. A nice regal rich and intense purple and it shines brilliantly on both color cardstocks. So just like Lunar Paste, the Solar Paste comes in a two ounce jar. You can see the differentiation between the two because the Lunar Paste has a clear label and the Solar Paste has a colored label so you can know exactly what color you're grabbing even though all the pastes are white. When introducing a new product, I also think it's super important to take a step back and look at it compared to all the other products to see how it's going to fit in your collection with swatches. So here I've swatched out Solar Paste along with some of the Lunar Pastes of the same color families so you guys can see sort of how it fits into your color collection. Here I swatched out Cross My Heart with some different reds and you can see this one's a little bit more pink but also these solar paste colors have more of a white haze and glow to them. Then you can see with Overheated it fits in with the orange category but it gives you a little bit more of a pinkish red orange so it looks really beautiful along with the other ones. With Golden Hour again it looks completely different than the rest of the yellows in the collection so it'll add a nice color to that color family. When it comes to the greens Crocodile Tears gives you a nice minty green color but it's definitely different than minty fresh in the collection. 
Then we have Beluga, which looks beautiful along with all the other blues. And again, it's just slightly different, a little bit brighter than the other blues in the line, and just gorgeous when it shines in the light. Then we have Royal Flush, which is a little bit more lavender than the rest of the purples in the Lunar Paste line. So although this is a completely new paste and it does different things than the Lunar Paste, I did want to show you compared to the other colors in the line, so you can see it's really leveling up your color collection and not competing with the other colors in the Lunar Paste line. So now let's talk about the formula of these pastes because that was super important to me. So you guys know and love the Lunar Paste formula, which is a creamy, rich texture paste, but it still holds all the amazing texture while still being able to spread it easily with a palette knife or your finger. So we've created the same exact formula in the Solar Paste, so it doesn't dry out on you and it's super nice and creamy and smooth. So let me go in and show you guys how both of these work. So again, Lunar Paste is tinted with that colored mica. There's really not many dyes inside of here. So it makes it so that the color is super rich and intense, whether you spread it onto white cardstock or if you go in onto the black cardstock, you're gonna see just how nice and vibrant these are. Check that out. It's almost even more intense on the black cardstock. So there is done with the palette knife and then I even wanted to show just doing it with my fingers so you guys can see that even when applied thin, these pastes really aren't very sheer. They're still super opaque. And again, even on the black cardstock, you can see when applied thin like that, you still get a really nice layer of that lunar paste. I'm so amazed every time I apply the lunar paste at the color just from sheerly that mica powder. There's tons in there. So now let's go into solar paste. This is that white paste with that iridescent shifting powder in it. So again, it's colored with just the powder, but these powders are very unique. So let's apply it down to the white cardstock. Again, once these dry down, you don't really notice the color of it until it's tilted. And also the shine really intensifies once it's dry. And then let's go in on the black cardstock and do that same thing, applying it down with our palette knife. Now here, a little bit more of that blue tint and shine comes through, but you still see that nice white paste. And again, depending on how thick you apply it to the black, depends on how much white you're going to get there. And then let's go in once again with my finger. We still have that same creamy consistency and formula so that we can apply it down to the cardstock with our finger on both mediums. And here you'll see when you apply it down, you almost get that instant intense blue color down onto the surface. And again, once these dry, you'll see just how the shine comes to life. And one thing that I think is super important because I'm really impatient is that these pastes are heat stable. And as long as you're using a heat tool and moving it around the surface as you're heat setting them, they shouldn't bubble and they shouldn't react to the heat, but they'll dry nice and quick. And I also find that if you go from the front and the back of the cardstock, it'll help aid and assist in drying these. And once these are dry, you can see a complete shift in the color and shine of the paste. They really become way more shiny. And on the solar paste, that blue really starts to come through as you tilt it in the light. And same thing on the black, you get that really vibrant color and shine with the lunar paste. And then when it comes to the solar paste, you get a little bit of a white haze. And then when you tilt it, you get that really beautiful, vibrant blue color. So it looks really great and totally different applied thick and thin on a white and black cardstock. As much as I love the intensity and shine of Lunar Paste, one thing I was really excited for with Solar Paste is that you can create a little bit more subtle backgrounds that still have a shine to them, but only necessarily when you tilt it on the card. This can be really great if you want a less distracting background or for a scene like this where we're gonna create some snow. So here I'm gonna go in and use the Sweater Weather Stencil, which has this really great geometric snow background. And whenever I do stenciling, I like to go in using a piece of mint tape. I'll roll it on my finger like this, place it onto the back of my stark white cardstock, and then I'll adhere this right down onto my work surface. That way the paper doesn't move underneath the stencil, and then we can lay the stencil down and tape it into place. Then I'm gonna go in using Beluga Lunar Paste because I want it to be white with a little bit of that blue tint. And I'm gonna grab my palette knife from the paste tool set, dig in, and I'll just apply quite a bit to the top of my stencil. So we have a little bit of an excess up here. And then I can bring in the scraper from the paste tool set. I really love this because it's got this nice flat edge and it covers the whole card. So I can just start at the top here and sort of scrape it down onto my card. And I don't necessarily want it to cover the whole thing. So I'm gonna let it kind of fade off with an uneven edge. But if you wanna keep applying the paste, just go in with the tool on more of its side like this and then apply more paste down. But if you wanna scrape more off, go with more of an upright motion, scrape it off, and then we can take any of the excess and scrape it right back into our jar. 
super easy to save. Then I'll peel off my stencil to reveal that beautiful background that we created. But before we keep moving, just like with lunar paste, you want to spray down the solar paste before it's dry and clean it off with a little bit of a cloth or a paper towel to get any off of your stencils and your craft sheet. It cleans off super easily when it's wet, but it is permanent when it's dry, so make sure to clean it off before it dries. And check out the shine of this beautiful background. You can see that amazing blue tint that we have on the snow background, but it's nice and subtle, so it doesn't really stand out. Like I said, it's a little bit less distracting than a full colored and shine background. And I also wanted to show that stenciling with that same beluga paste on black cardstock with that same thickness gives you this look. So it's a little bit white and hazy when you're looking at it straight on, and then it goes into a beautiful blue shine and glow once you tilt in the light. And again, the duality of the paste is insane because you get a really subtle look on white cardstock, but on black cardstock, it really shines and stands out. Now the reason why solar paste doesn't have a ton of colors and there's only six in the line is because we wanted you to take these and really bring your imagination to create your own colors and different color combinations. When I first had the idea for solar paste, I wanted it to be a colored paste that had a different color mica in it. So that it was one color, but then it tilted when it shined. But that would involve us creating a ton more pastes, like a red that shifts to gold, and then a red that shifts to blue, and you'd have to buy a lot more supplies. Whereas with solar paste, we only have six different colors that are white and you can mix in whatever color you want. So if you want a red that turns yellow, you can totally do that. But if you also want that red to be able to turn green, you can do that as well. And you don't need different pastes to do so. So for my first color concoction, I'm gonna use overheated. Now you have to remember these pastes are white. So with the color that you choose is going to be the color mica that it shifts to, okay? So keep that in mind. So I'm using overheated, which is that orange color. So I'm just gonna bring in a piece of acetate to mix my colors on. I'm going in with my palette knife again, and I'm just going to spread this color down onto my mixing palette. And to colorize this, I'm gonna use reinkers. You wanna use a translucent dye-based ink because if you use something opaque, it's actually going to cover up the mica, whereas a translucent medium like this is still going to allow the mica to shine through the color. So I'm gonna take this no diving blue color just drop a couple drops in here. I think I'm just gonna do one for the time being. And if I want to, to make it a little bit bolder, I can always mix in more. So once we have that color in, the Simon Hurley Create Reinkers are super intense. So we only need one drop to go a really long way when it comes to mixing this color in. And it creates this really beautiful sky blue color. But if I want to, like I said, I can always go in with another drop if we just want it to be a tad bit darker. So start off with a little because you can always add more to mix your own colors. And this creates just a little bit of a darker, more intense blue color. All right, and then to apply this to a project, I'm just going to add it right down to my cardstock. So I'm going to add some down to my white cardstock here. You can see I'll do a nice thick layer of that color. And then I'll also apply some down to the black cardstock just because I want to show you the completely different look that you get from both mediums. So I'll just wipe some off there, bring it to my black cardstock, so you can see how they both look. And then I'll let these dry. And once dry, here is what the paste looks like on white cardstock, and wait for it. The magic is so beautiful. When you tilt it, it really gives you that amazing color and shine that you had using the paste. So again, this was the orange paste overheated. And in this version, I used one drop of no diving. So you can sort of write down your recipes and keep using them over and over if you want to create a similar look every time. And I also wanted to show what it looks like on black cardstock because it looks completely different, right? Because that translucent dye-based ink, you can still see it in there, you can still see that blue, but it's not as intense as that orange color, which really comes to life in here. So here you have orange with sort of a tint of blue. It looks completely different on both colored cardstocks. Both are stunning, and sometimes you get a surprise on the black cardstock that you might absolutely love. Whereas if you want more of an intense color, I would use the lunar paste on the black cardstock. Next, I wanted to share some more mixes of colors that I did. So these are the same color on white and black cardstock. Here, I used overheated, and I tinted it with yellow. So you can see that really beautiful orange shine in it when you tilt it, but that really bright yellow color when you look at it straight on. Now here I used the royal flush color, but I added some piggyback reinker to it. So you can see when you tilt that, you get that beautiful purple shine in there. And then you can see on the black cardstock, you get that beautiful purple color with just a little bit of pink. Here I used beluga and I tinted it with a little bit of psych reinker. You can see that amazing green color, and when you tilt it, you get that gorgeous blue. 
And again, on this black card stock, it looks completely different. It's almost a little bit greenish. And then again, when you tilt it, you get that really intense blue. And then down here is Crocodile Tears. And I colored it using, I believe, a little bit of Breakup Blue Reinker. So you get that beautiful blue color, and then it turns really nice and minty with that Crocodile Tears. And then again, you get that beautiful mint color on the black card stack. So, so many beautiful options when it comes to mixing up your solar paste colors. And I also wanted to mention, you don't have to follow the color wheel with these because the mica inside isn't going to interact with the re-inker that you put in. So no matter what color, if you use orange and blue together, you're not gonna create brown because those aren't gonna really interact. It just shows when you tilt it and you get that beautiful shine. So having these dye-based reinkers are gonna be super helpful when coloring in your solar paste because they're translucent and because they're super concentrated, so they'll have tons of color with just one or two drops. And these are a great investment because they also re-ink your ink pads. So it's like a two-for-one purchase. So I'm gonna go in here with the Guppy reinker, and my ink pad actually was a little bit dry for this one. So all you need to do is go back and forth, creating kind of zigzags of ink, depending on how dry your ink pad is and just swirl it over the top to cover it with ink. The ink will then slowly absorb back into the ink pad, so you're gonna to wanna to wait a couple minutes for it to kind of set and soak in, and then you'll have a fresh and really nice and juicy ink pad to keep using. This is a really great way to re-ink your ink pads and bring new life to them too. Now I wanna go in and show you how your solar paste reacts with water-based dye inks like the Simon Hurley Create inks, because you can get tons of really cool effects when mixing the products together. Next I'm gonna show what the solar paste looks like applied over top of inks, but a little bit thicker. It creates a really cool effect in the end. So I'm going in using the Warped Circle Stencil. I love this kind of fun and playful circle design, and there's lots of open space, so it's gonna really help you see this technique when it comes to life. Again, I'm doing the same thing, using a little bit of mint tape to hold down my cardstock place it on the back, and place it right down onto my surface. And then I can really easily go in and tape my stencil into place as well. I love the mint tape because I know that if it touches my cardstock, it's not going to rip anything. All right, so I'm just going to create a blend of colors across the surface of my cardstock. And when you're applying the color down before you apply the solar paste over top, you want to apply it a little bit more heavy handed than you actually want to see the color because the solar paste is going to cover it up just a little bit and sort of dull the color down. So I'm intentionally going in onto the surface and making sure to layer up my color nice and dark so that we get a really beautiful, vibrant color at the end. Then I'll bring in Psych, which is my kind of lime green color. It's a little bit of a mix between a green and a yellow, and it blends together with this blue just so beautifully. And what I love about my inks is they're translucent dye-based inks, which means when they layer over top of each other like this, you're gonna create new colors in between. So here between the kind of lime green and blue, we're creating a nice dark green right in between, which is just gorgeous. Next, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of Prom Queen, which is this beautiful pink color. And since that green has kind of a yellow hue to it, it's going to blend with Prom Queen quite nicely in between to create kind of an orangey tone. And then last but not least, up top, I'm gonna to use Crown Me, which is this beautiful, rich, royal, regal purple color. It's so gorgeous and very intense, which I absolutely love. So I'll blend that at the top, and again, really trying to make these colors nice and dark using my dome foam blending tools. Now for this background, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of the Golden Hour Solar Paste. I'm going to go in with my palette knife from the Paste Tool Set, grab out quite a bit of the paste, and then again, we'll go right at the bottom here, and I like to bring in a little bit more than I need to kind of layer it up down here so that it's really easy to scrape down and get a nice smooth background. So that when we go in with our scraper tool from the paste tool set, we can easily scrape this across the surface and have enough paste to use all the way throughout. So I've scraped it across once and there's still paste on the tool here. So what you wanna do is go at kind of a sideways motion like I was showing you earlier and really place it down on the mat there and that helps kind of distribute some of that excess paste and scrape it across the background. Now there's not too much excess paste here, but we don't wanna put this back into the jar since there's a little bit of color from the ink on it. So you could take this on an excess piece of cardstock, scrape it off, and this will make a great piece to die cut out of if you use like a word die or something. All right, then we'll lift the stencil off the background. You can see how nice and crisp those lines are because the paste, like I said, is thick enough so that it doesn't seep underneath the stencils, which I really appreciate. And to clean, you just wanna go in and spray everything down with water. That'll make it really easy to wipe off the surface while it's still wet. 
And then when it comes to this background, you actually want to set it off to the side to dry. I know earlier I could tell you you can heat set the paste to help it dry. And that still rings true here. But with these water-based inks, we're actually waiting for the water-based ink to absorb in through the solar paste. And that's what's gonna allow the color to show through because it's not necessarily a see-through paste. Do you want a water reactive ink? So something like the Simon Hurley Create inks will be a really great option for a background like this. So I'll set this off to the side and depending on your climate and how thick you applied it, it should take about 30 minutes to an hour to have it dry. So here it is once it's dry and you can still see all the beautiful colors underneath. But like I said, it gets a little bit more muted with the paste on top. But then when you tilt it in the light, you really see that paste change colors and shift with the mica. So here we used the golden hour. So you see that beautiful yellow tone that sort of takes over. And then once you tilt it back out of the light and look straight on, you see all those beautiful colors and tones. I love using solar paste like this on top to get that really cool color shifting effect. And I also did this with another rainbow ink blended background, again, using the warped circle stencil. And here I used the purple solar paste and check that out. It just really blocks out all the colors and turns purple when you tilt it. And then you get that beautiful rainbow background once you see it straight on. Now I also wanna show you guys what this looks like on a fully inked background. So you can see what the paste looks like compared to the completely inked background. So I'm just going in here again, using my dome foam blending tools to apply a heavy amount of my ink onto the surface. Next, I'll go in using a little bit of Prom Queen. And these Dome Foam Blending tools are really helpful in creating tons of color and also not getting any harsh marks as you're blending onto your surface. So I really do like these to apply ink down onto the surface to get lots of vibrant color. And check out how beautiful that blend is. And then lastly, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of Slippery and Wet to finish off the background up top here. And this yellow color is going to blend in really beautifully with that pink to again, create a new color in between. And then with this one, I'm going to use the tiny diamond stencil. I love these little textures and I have a couple stencils like this in my collection. So I'm just going to place this down onto the surface and tape it down to hold it in place on top of the background. To stencil on this, I'm gonna use Overheated, which is this really beautiful orange color. So it's going to sort of go along with the different warm tones that we have going on in the background. And for this one, I'm just going to use the palette knife from the Paste Tool Set, and I'm just going to do some sort of selective stenciling. You don't always need to do a whole background, and you don't always need to have your whole stencil covered. So what's really fun about this is I'm just going to go in on the background and select a couple different areas where I want these diamonds to be stenciled in. I'll do some on the edge here too. And a little bit of this paste goes a really long way. And I'll do just some right here too. We'll lift off this stencil. You can see that really fun sort of broken up pattern. It adds a lot more interest doing it that way rather than doing the whole thing. And this paste doesn't seem too contaminated. You can kind of tell when it's a different color, but I'm gonna put it right back into the jar. All right, I love how this texture is looking, but again, with this one, I wanted to sort of lift up the colors of those water-based Simon Hurley Create inks. So I'm gonna set this off to the side to let it air dry so that it has time to lift up those colors and get the paste saturated. And here, this background is once it's dry, you can see that the solar paste really sort of starts to blend in with the inked background, which I really like. And it sort of just adds some texture. And then when you tilt it, again, you get all of that really amazing and intense shine across the background, which is so much fun. And that orange color is really starting to show through here. So now you saw what it looks like when you apply solar paste over top of inks. But what if we already have a dried solar paste background and now we want to ink over top of it? So to do this, I'm going to use the snow background that I created earlier, which is already completely dry. And because we put the solar paste down first, it now has a white appearance instead of picking up any of the inks. And now we can go in over top of it and do some ink blending to create kind of a snowy scene. So we're going to go in using a little bit of midnight snack on my domed foam blending tool and start blending down some color on top. And then I'll move in using a little bit of no diving, which is sort of a mid-tone color, and blend it in with Midnight Snack to create a beautiful blend and tons of depth and dimension. And I'll sort of fade that color out to a lighter blue here at the bottom. Beautiful. I'm loving this blend. And what I love about a background like this is when we wipe off the paste with our paper towel, it's going to remove any of the excess ink that's sitting on top of that paste. And that paste acts like a resist. So it stays completely white. And then of course, when you tilt it, you still get that really beautiful blue shine to it, but it acts as a resist. So that design is nice and bold against the inked background that we did. 
So the way that solar paste looks along with your dye-based inks really depends on how you apply them and in what order you do it. Because if you apply the solar paste first, it acts as a resist. And if you apply the solar paste second, it sort of lifts up some of that color and becomes a part of the inked background. So as a maker, you get tons of opportunity and creative play when it comes to applying down the paste with inks. So here I'm gonna go in using the Lemon Branch layering stencil. This is a two piece layering stencil set. And on the back, you can see how that Lemon Branch is supposed to turn out when all of these stencils easily line up. So I'm gonna start off with the leaves using a little bit of Psych ink, which is that lighter green color. And I'm just going to go in with my dome foam blending tool and quickly ink this up. To add a little bit of dimension, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of Viper, which is my darker green color. And I'm just going to go in at one side of these leaves and apply down this color for a little bit of dimension shading. Then I'm gonna to go to the bottom of this stencil because these leaves are separate. I'm going to just shift it upwards and these leaves are going to line up with half of the other leaves to give a little bit more dimension and shading. So I'll just go in here and fill out those areas and once those are all filled in, it looks like those leaves are kind of folded over and have a bit more dimension. So here's where we can start adding a little bit of that solar paste down. I'm actually going to go back in with that first layer now that the leaves are all complete. Once we have it lined up, I'm gonna go in using a piece of mint tape to hold it in place. And then I'll go in with the Crocodile Tears Solar Paste, which again is that sort of minty green color. I'm going to grab just a little bit using my palette knife and I'll place it on an acrylic block to use as a palette. And you want kind of a thin layer. If you've seen me do this before using Lunar Paste, a thin layer goes a really long way. Then I'll go in using my domed foam blending tool and I'm just going to sort of dab the foam right into the paste. We don't want too much on the foam, just enough to cover it. And then I'll go over top of the surface and start blending in a circular motion like this. And this is going to apply that solar paste right to the stencil, but it's gonna give us a nice thin layer so that we can still see the inks completely underneath. Something like this with lunar paste was never possible. We were never able to lay down a color layer and still be able to see underneath. The mica sort of covered everything up, which was stunning, but you couldn't use it along with inks. Whereas here we can layer it over top of inks and you can still see all the details underneath. And then we can lift off our stencil. And when it comes to cleaning your sponge off, you wanna clean this before it dries so that it doesn't harden. To do this, I'm just gonna go in, spray it down with a little bit of water, and then I'll start dabbing it off until it becomes nice and clear. You can also remove the foam from the tool and run this underneath the sink to get it nice and clean until the next use. And because the layer of solar paste was nice and thin, it's already dry. And when we tilt it in the light, you can see that really great mint green color over top of the blended green that we can still see all of the details through. It's just gorgeous. Then we'll bring in the next stencil and I'm going to stencil down this detailed branch. So all I need to do is make sure that it's touching all of the different leaves and it fits in pretty perfectly in between there. And then I'll go in using a little bit of Weeping Willow ink, which is this nice, super dark, rich brown. And I'm just going to go in and blend it all down. And there's also a couple little dots that we can go in and add some ink through. And that's gonna give some detail at the bottom of the lemon. All right, then for this last layer, I'm going to go in with the lemons. And you can see this is super easy to line up because it just sort of fits in place with everything else already completed. Then we'll go in and blend our color down. So I'm gonna start off by using Shooting Star, which is this really bright and vibrant yellow color. I absolutely love it. And especially for these lemons, it makes them really come to life nicely. And then I'll go in using a little bit of Guppy because I wanna add some orange shading. And to do this on the same layer, I'm just gonna go in and sort of shade the top half of these lemons with the orange. You can see that really sort of adds some depth and dimension to them. So just add that color onto half of the lemons, starting from the top and coming down and it really brings them to life. So for this, I wanna use a little bit of overheated solar paste. So again, I'll just take a little bit of the paste, apply it down to create a palette. Then again, I'll use my domed foam blending foam. This is the same one I was using earlier. Dab it in there, not too much on the foam. And then we'll go in and blend it onto our surface. And again, you just want a nice thin layer over top of the surface to give that really beautiful shine but it doesn't cover up any of the ink blending that we did. And you can sort of layer it up to make it even more shiny. So I'm gonna give this just one second to dry and then we can go right back in with even more solar paste to add sort of a second layer on top of these lemons to add even more shine and dimension. 
All right, then we'll go in, we'll peel the stencil off the surface, and I'm just loving how this is looking already. And just like lunar paste, solar paste dries in about a matter of a minute when you apply it so thin like that, using your finger or a blending tool. And then when we tilt this in the light, it's got tons of beautiful shine on both the leaves and the lemons, but you still see all of the amazing inked details underneath. So I love that you don't lose any of the detail, but now we're able to add layers of shine and a little bit of texture over top of our blending and stencil backgrounds. And that really opens a whole new world of opportunities when it comes to using solar paste along with your inks to create some really cool results with stenciling. Now it's also super important to show you what lunar paste looks like along with solar paste. And I'm sure you guys will come up with even more ways to use them together, but today I wanted to bring in a technique that I do often and really love. And that is some faux foiling using embossing and these pastes. So I'm gonna go in with an Altenew 3D embossing folder. This one is called Book Cover Engravings. I just love Altenew's florals and I'm going to use some black cardstock to do this technique because it's really going to stand out in the black. So I'm using the platform base and the platform top. This works with Altenew plates. And then I'm gonna go in using one of my cutting plates. But when you're doing embossing, check out your embossing folder and what sandwich works best for the different company embossing folders you might have. So I'll run this right through the die cutting machine to emboss it. And when we lift this out, check out the amazing texture that that adds to your black cardstock. I absolutely love it. And like I said, Altenew does such a great job at creating some really great 3D detailed florals. All right, so I'm gonna start off this technique like I usually do. I'm gonna go in using a little bit of lunar paste. Here, I'm starting off using a little bit of slippery and wet. And when it comes to this technique, you really want just a tiny little bit. So I sort of swipe it in on the side and wipe off some of the excess on my finger. And then I'll go in and really gently go over top of the embossed design. And by just gently going over top with a little bit of paste, you just hit those raised areas and you leave some of those debossed areas black. And this creates such a beautiful colored and foiled technique. So if you're struggling with it, just kind of keep trying and you'll sort of get the hang of how much paste you need to apply in order to get this really beautiful result. And like I said, that paste dries really quick. It's already starting to dry and you get that really beautiful color and shine with the lunar paste. Then I'll go in with a paper towel, spray it down and wipe off my finger in between colors. And it really doesn't stain your finger too much. I recommend using your finger though over a blending tool because the blending foam will sort of sink into all of those debossed areas. Whereas just using your finger will kind of rub over top and not get down into the debossing. Next, I'll use my really bright and vibrant prom queen color. I absolutely love this one. It's got so much color to it. I actually recently had to get a new jar of this because I already went through all of it. And I'm just going to go on the surface and swipe this color down and you get a really beautiful, intense color. Like I said, these have tons of colored mica in them and they're very intense against the black cardstock, which I think is just gorgeous. Check that out, all right? And even that pink doesn't really stain at all when you wipe it off with a little bit of water before it dries. And lastly, I'll go in using a little bit of fake plant, which is one of the darker green colors from my lunar paste line. I'll just grab a little bit here on my finger and I'll go right onto the surface and lightly apply this down to some of the leaves on the background. Super easy to do, and then when you need a little bit more, just go right back in and blend it on. And when you're trying to just hit the raised areas in this background, just use a really light pressure, and then your finger will hopefully not touch any of the other areas in the background. I just try to go as light as possible and sort of glaze over top of those embossed areas to avoid the rest of the background. And then same thing on these leaves up here just applying a little bit of that green all throughout. All right, the lunar paste is applied and it's already dry on the surface and it's super shiny. And most of you guys are probably like, well, you could stop here, right? It's a really beautiful background as is and I love all that amazing shine. But we're gonna step it up a notch using the solar pastes. So to start off, I'm going in using a little bit of Cross My Heart, which is that reddish pink solar paste. And I'm just going to do the same technique by just applying a little bit down onto the edge of my finger right here. And then I'm going to go on top of the other color and swipe a little bit on to the center of the flower to add a little bit of pink. And you can barely see how I'm applying it right now. You can just probably see a little bit of a white haze across the surface, but you can see it a little bit better in person. And then with this pink, I'll do the opposite and I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. So I'm gonna go in using a little bit of golden hour, which is this gorgeous yellow gold color. And again, just a little bit goes a long way when it comes to using these pastes. And I'm just going to apply a little bit down to the center of that pink flower. Grab just a tiny bit more right in the center and blend it out a little bit. And last but not least, I'm gonna go in using some crocodile tears, which is sort of a different shade of green than the green we use in the background. 
I'm just going to apply a little bit down to my finger. And then with this, we can just sort of go here and there on these leaves. And this is going to sort of add some highlights and that minty color all throughout those leaves. And then with these bigger leaves, I'm just gonna sort of swipe some all throughout. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's just applying another layer of color on for some extra depth. And once that's all dry, check out the amazing depth and dimension you get with this. It really steps up the technique completely because when you look at it straight on, you can barely see the extra dimension you added with the solar paste. It's pretty transparent. And then when you tilt it, you really see the pink on this yellow flower, the yellow on the pink, and that minty green color really stands out against the dark fake plant that we added at the beginning. I absolutely love how this looks with all of the extra shading and dimension that we added with the lunar and solar paste. So using them together like that creates such amazing effects. I'm literally stunned by the results and I can't wait to see how you guys sort of incorporate them together in new ways to create such beautiful backgrounds. All right, you guys, that's it for today's release video. A look into some of the things you can do with solar paste and I'm sure you guys are going to take this to a whole new level with all the different techniques you can create with it. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave a comment down below letting me know which project or technique was your favorite from today's video. I would love to chat with you guys down there. Thank you so much for taking your time to join me today and I'll see you all soon in another card making and crafting video. Have a great day, bye.